Canto 15, Circle 7, Round 3 The Violent Against Nature Synopsis Protected by the marvelous powers of the boiling rill, the poets walk along the banks across the burning plain. The wood of the suicides is behind them. The great cliff at whose foot lies the eighth circle is before them. They pass one of the roving bands of sodomites. One of the sinners stops Dante, and with great difficulty the poet recognizes him under his baked features as Sir Bronito Latino. This is a reunion which a dearly loved man and writer, one who has had considerable influence over Dante's own development, and Dante addresses him with great and sorrowful affection, paying him the highest tribute offered to any sinner in the inferno. Brunetto prophesies Dante's suffering at the hands of the Florentines, gives an account of the souls that move with him through the fire, and finally, under divine compulsion, races off against the plain. Text We go by one of the stone margins now, and the stream of rivets make a shade above it, guarding the stream and banks from the flaming snow. As the Flemings of the lowland between Bruges and Wissant, under constant threat of the sea, erect their great dislikes to hold back the deluge, at the patents along the shore of the Brent builds levees to protect their towns and castles, lest Charinda drown in the spring torrent. To the same plain, though not so wide nor high, did the engineer, whose he may have been, design the margin we crossed by. Already we were so far from the wood, that even had I turned to look at it, I could have made it out from where I stood. When a company of shades came into sight, walking behind the bank, they stared at, it, at us as men at evening by the new moon's light stare at one another when they pass by on a dark road, pointing their eyebrows towards us, as an old trailer squints at his needle's eye. Stared at so closely by the ghostly crew, I was recognized by one who seizes the hem of my skirt and says, Wonder of wonders, you! And I, who stretched out his arm to me, searched his baked features closely, till at last I traced the image from my memory. In spite of the burnt crust and bending near to put my face close to his, at last I answered, Sir Benito, are you here? Oh, my son, may it not displease you, he cried. If Benito Latino leave your company and turn to walk a little by your side, and I to him, with all my soul I asked it, or let us sit together, if it pleases him, who is my guide, and leads me through this pit. My son, he said, whoever of this train pauses a moment must lie a hundred years, forbidden to brush off the burning rain. Therefore go on, I will walk at your hem, and then rejoin my company, which goes morning eternal, lost in eternal flame. I did not dare descend to his own level, but kept my head inclined as one who walks in reverence, meditating good and evil. What brings you here before your own last day? What fortune or what destiny he, destiny he began? And who is it that leads you this dark way? Up there in the happy life I went astray in a valley, I replied. Before I had reached the fullness of my years, only yesterday at dawn I turned from it. The Spirit showed himself to me, and I was turning back, and guides me home again along this road. And he, follow your star, for if at all the sweet life I saw one truth shines clearly, you cannot miss your glorious arrival. And had I lived to do what I meant to do, I would have cheered and seconded your work, observing heaven as well as disposed towards you. But that ungrateful and malignant stock that came down from Fiestal of old, 
and still smacks of the mountain and the rock, for good works will be your will be your enemy. And there it caused the sweet fig is not meant to bear its fruit beside the bitter sorb tree. Even the old adage calls them blind. An envious, proud, and avarice people sees that root of your customs from your mind. It is written in your stars, it will come to pass, that your honors shall make both side hunger for you, but the goats shall never reach to crop that grass. Lest the beast of Fistol devour their gets like sorrows, like sows, but never let them touch the plant. If among their ranks, rankness any springs up yet, in which is born again the holy seed of the Ro Romans, who, re who remained among the rabble when the Florence made a new nest for their greed. Ah, had I all my wish, I answered then, you would not be banished from the world in which you were radiance among men. For the sweet image, gentle and paternal, you were to me the world, when hour by hour you taught me how man makes himself eternal, lives in my mind and now strikes in my heart, and while I live the gratitude I owe it, and speak to men out of my life and art. What you have told me in my course, I write by another text. I say a, to so a lady who will judge these matters if I reach her height. This much I would have you know, so long I say, as nothing in my continence, conscience troubles me, I may prepare for my fortune, come what may. Twice already in the eternal shade I have heard this prophecy, but let fortune turn her will as she pleased, and the countryman his spade. My guiding spirit paused on my last word, and turning right around, stood eye to eye to say to me, Well heeded is well heard. But I did not reply to him, going on with Sir Br Brunuto to ask him who was with him in the hot sands, the best born and best known. And he said to me, Of, so of some who share this walk, it is good to know. Of the rest, let us say nothing, for the time will be too short for us so much talk. In brief, we are all clerks and men of worth, great men of letters, scholars of renown, all by the one same crime defiled on earth. Fritician moves there along the wearisome sad way, and Fritito de Asarno and also there, if you have any longing for such scum. You might have seen that one of the servants of servants sent from Arno to the Bacagone when he left his unnatural organ wrapped in cermentis. I would say more. There across the sand a new smoke rises. A new people come, and I must run to be with my own band. Remember my treasure, in which I shall live on. I ask no more. He turned then, and he seemed across the plain, like one of them who had run. For the great cloth at Verona, and of those, more like the one who wins than those who lose.